everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Inchworm Show. I'm your host, Yeshia Inchworm Phillips. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sitting next to my left is a young lady. Um, she is doing so many great things out here in the Lake County community. She's an activist. And she is fighting for something that we all need to be conscious of. And I'm so glad that she's here with me today. Um, I was first introduced to her when I was doing some speaking for the hashtag Just Do It underscore Vote Coalition. When I was going to the city council meetings, I was going to promote and talk about the things that the, that the coalition was doing. And then I saw her get up and speak, talking about something very important, the ethylene oxide. And I wanted to know more about it. She gave this really empowering uh, speech when she was up there. And I was very curious about it. So here she is, Miss Diana Burdett. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for being here. You're in the wormhole. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be so comfortable. Yes. I, I like worms. Yes. <laughs> well, like, as I said, um, I saw you at the city council meeting. Um, and... You were talking about something that was very important that is really impacting the Lake County community. Um, can you talk a little bit more about ethylene, ethylene oxide? Am I saying it correctly? Yes, okay. ethylene oxide. Yes. Ethylene oxide. Yes. Ethylene oxide. Okay. Tell everybody what, what that is and, and who you are and what you do. Okay. So ethylene oxide is a colorless, scentless gas. And it is used to sterilize medical equipment. Then it's also used as an intermediate chemical. And it's used to produce other chemicals or um, soaps, creams, plastics, things like that. Mm -hmm. So, And that's how it's used at Vantage Chemicals up north. It's within um, the Gurney zip code, but it's walled by, by three areas of Waukegan. So. Okay, so uh, Vantage and Medline. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, this chemical in 2016 was reclassified by the Environmental Protection Agency, which is the EPA. They have a mandate to protect... Uh, the citizenry of the nation mm -hmm. uh, from environmental toxins uh, and environmental hazards. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what they do. The, the EPA will um, put together systems to protect the citizenry of the nation. Okay. Uh, and so it was reclassified, ethylene oxide was reclassified in 2016, and it was classified into a Class 1A carcinogen. Okay. Meaning that at any level it can cause humans cancer. It's a known human carcinogen and mutagen. So what it does, uh, ethylene oxide, is that it will change DNA mm -hmm. and um, it can begin, it can kill the cell and it starts to create cancer. Wow. Uh, and this is at any level. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really severe carcinogen. Yeah, how did you find out about this? And what's your relationship with, with this in general. In November uh, 2nd of 2018, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Hawthorne put out a um, an article in the Chicago Tribune, mm -hmm. and he reported on um, iris findings by the EPA. Iris is a system that they use to um, estimate higher cancer rates in specific areas. Lake County was within the iris wow. findings. And so he, he pointed the community in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how it, it, it came out to the open. The article itself did, did specify that the uh, local, local elected officials were aware of it. Uh, and so I thought it was being taken care of. February 3rd of 2019, I went to a meeting and I was informed that there was nothing being done. Mm. So I believe I saw you on the 4th at City Council. Right. Right. And so that's when I first, that was my first talk, uh, mm -hmm. which was the day after I found out. Wow. I, I found out and I said, well, nothing's being done. Uh, Waukegan doesn't know about it. Right. You know, Park City doesn't know about it. North Chicago doesn't know about it. And we are highly affected. What do you want them to do exactly? We need air testing, which is actually happening. Okay. We've accomplished that. We've right. accomplished air testing. It's going to be happening sometime in June. Okay. Which is wonderful. However, we need higher regulation. Regulation 
of this chemical because right now the regulation as it stands wasn't actually updated in 2016. So the, the EPA updates the chemical in 2016, makes it more severe. It increases the severity of cancer risk for adults by, by 30% and for children by 60%. Wow. And then they do nothing. Mm. That's it. That's all they did. Okay, we are aware of this, this, uh, this gas and we know that it's causing more cancer and, and now that's it. We're done. Mm. That's all they did. Mm. So there was no regulation and nothing was put forth to prevent these facilities mm -hmm. from letting it emit into our atmosphere, so letting it come out into our atmosphere. And then there was no testing at the time. There was no testing at the time. Okay, yeah. so we've been, so everybody's been trying to fight, not everyone, but people have been trying to fight to get the air testing. So we accomplished that, so now we need some regulation as to how much is actually getting put out there. Or We need to find out how much is getting put out there, but right. we cannot have any being Abs put absolutely out. yeah absolutely it's severely toxic it's it's a cancerous known cancerous and mutagen do so. you think there's a reason why it's being pushed out in certain communities absolutely why we are fence line communities that means that we are communities that are high in people of color mm -hmm. and high in poverty level mm. okay and historically the model has shown that they have pushed people of color into specific areas and then after they have pushed them into these specific areas they overcrowd them they let the infrastructure deteriorate and then and then they systematically eradicate us by putting up facilities that put out toxins Absolutely. and that's what's happening right now Absolutely. And it's not just this community. Mm -hmm. There's a community in Louisiana. There's a community in Delaware. These are all fence line communities, high in people of color and high in poverty rates. Wow. Some of these communities have been dealing with legacy toxins for 40 years, mm. Louisiana specifically. It's, they do nothing. And then they get air testing. They fight, they fight, they fight. They get air testing, ATSDR, which is another agency that comes in and does um, they do epidemiological testing, mm -hmm. so studies, to see what type of uh, issues are, have been risen, right? Mm -hmm. So which, if cancer is higher, then what cancers are higher. Mm -hmm. So they do these studies, and then nothing gets done. Here's your study. Bye. Mm -hmm. Nothing gets done. So these communities are left fighting for years. We already went in and did your air testing. We already went in and did your... Uh, studies. What else do you want us to do? They do absolutely nothing else. Their representatives don't push for regulation. They don't push for more testing. They don't push for for monitoring. This is what is needed. Mm -hmm. If there is a chemical that is being addressed and that's being that's being found in your atmosphere, then you need to know if it's continued to be to be leached out and, and to be emitted into the atmosphere, and if it's going to be taken care of. But they don't do anything. They become legacy chemicals. Wow. So that's what needs to be done here. We have ethylene oxide and in our atmosphere. That's not a question. So we're breathing it in right now. Yeah, actually we are from about one and a half miles from okay. Medline facility. Here. Okay. So yes, we are absolutely breathing it in right now. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So the air testing, once the air testing is done, now we need to push for regulation in order for it to stop. Yeah. To see how much is being pushed out there, and then we need it to stop. We need it to stop. We need regulation. So right now, we do have. There are two bills that passed unanimously from the Senate. Right. I saw you went down and to Congress. You spoke to Congress. To EPA. To EPA. Yeah. Okay. To the EPA headquarters. Okay. And um, what they're trying to do. So, unfortunately, our administration is not a human, a, a humanistic administration. Mm -hmm. They are a very business friendly administration. So what they're doing is they're rolling back the science. They're taking away regulations. They're taking away the science. They're saying the science doesn't matter anymore. And so these, these corporations are able to come in and emit more toxins into the air because now there's no regulations. Mm -hmm. Now there's no regulations. So do you, let me ask you this. You think that they are trying to kill us? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Why do you think so? Why do you think so? Because yeah. we are a threat. Mm. We are a threat to their power. Mm. That's why. 
because they know that we are the bigger community. And they know that if they lose even a little bit of power, they're going to lose all the power. And we need to stand up because we do have the power. We have a voice and we need to start using it. Absolutely. And we can. We can use it. And we can, we can demand what is our right, our human right. Clean air is our human right. Mm -hmm. A life of health is our human right. And we have to start standing up and using our voice. What do we do? What can the people do in order to get involved? The people that want to know more about ethylene oxide, what do we do? So you're going to log on to Facebook. You're going to go to our page, Clean Power Lake County. You're going to send us your first name, your last name, your email address, your phone number, whatever contact information. And we will send you information on how to get active. We need to show up at city council meetings. We need to, we're going to be doing a rally, so we need to show up at rallies because the only way our representatives and our federal and state level representatives are going to do anything is if we rise up and we show them that we have a voice. That is the only way it's going to happen. And if we don't do that, if we stay at home, then they're not going to do anything. And we will have a legacy chemical coming out for the next 40 years. From, from the sterilization company and from the Vantage Chemical Company. Right now we have legislation that's going to address the sterilization company, mm -hmm. but there is nothing that's being addressed as for the intermediate chemical. One last question. Do you know anyone who has been affected by this? So, um, yes. <laughs> the reason why I became so passionately involved was because in, in 2014, I became very sick. I ended up in that emergency room. Little by little, I started deteriorating. I started taking, doing blood exams and seeing several specialists. They, they didn't know what was happening. And my gastroenterologist, all he could say is, I don't know what's happening to you. Something is happening. It's kill some, your, your good cells in your stomach are being killed. I don't know by what, but your resistance, your resistant bacteria is allowed to thrive and so it's taking over your gut. Mm. I was down to 200 calories a day. Wow. Yeah, I lost a lot of weight. I had I was bones and it wasn't very healthy. Mm. Um, in October of 2018, my husband got a more permanent position and we decided to purchase a house in Waukegan. And mm. so we bought a house uh, in the sixth ward. And two weeks later, I started I started recovering and I started being able to eat more. I, I couldn't eat apples and uh, watermelon and kale and spinach, all these things that you should be able to eat. I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat it. Wow. So um, I started to experiment and I, could st I started being able to eat again. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do know. I myself have experienced it. I saw the article. I read it. I sent it to my husband who's a biochemist. I said, tell me more about this toxin because I also noticed that we were only a mile away within the cancer track. Mm. So um, he took a look at it and he said, oh, let me get back to you. He talked to some other scientists that he is familiar with and they all concur. I think your wife was being poisoned. Wow. There is no way to actually confirm that. Okay. Because there are no studies. Okay. No epidemiological studies. Okay. So there's no way to confirm it, and there's no way to pinpoint it to that, mm -hmm. at least not yet. Right. Just tell the people why it's important. It's important if you want to see future generations, to be honest, because this toxin is more severe to women mm -hmm. and pediatric women. It causes more uh, cancers in women than it does in men and the cancer rates are clearly elevated for mm -hmm. females. So if you want to have children, if you want to have future generations, then you need to stand up. Because right now we are being slowly eradicated, systemically and methodically eradicated. They put us into these areas and then they line us up with a coal plant, ash ponds. We have five super fun, sites in Waukegan, and we have ethylene oxide. Mm. This isn't new. Ethylene oxide has been around since 
the 1800s, they know about ethylene oxide, mm -hmm. and they did it anyways. Wow. Thank you for that. Um, I always talk about being the exception, you know, that's being proud of who you are, being proud of where you came from, and always doing more and excelling, doing more than what's expected of you. Um, I have to commend you for all of your work that you have been doing with this and letting, doing your do duty, doing more than what's expected of you. You don't have to spread the word about this, even though you have I do. been. I have to. Yeah, yeah, but you don't either. There are people who just don't, but it's your duty. I mean, it's all of our, we're supposed to be in this together, but you don't have to do it is what I'm saying. You don't have to, and you're choosing to. So I commend you for, for doing this and getting your getting the word out there. For everyone who, who's in the black and brown communities, people who are affected by this, women, um, it's very, very important. I get your emails. I see the work that you're doing, and, and it's amazing. I'm here to support. Um, I'm going to be sharing the video. Make sure if you're tuned in right now, share this video and get out there. Get to your city council meetings. Get out there to the rallies. Figure out what is going on in your community. This is why I'm working with the Just Do It uh, vote, underscore vote coalition to get millennials involved to let you know what's going on what what is actually going on in our communities and we have proper representation that they are in there for the people absolutely and not for their pocket thank you so much for being here again diana thank you for keep having up me. the amazing work that you're doing and stay strong we are we are all in this together mm -hmm. um and make sure you continue to follow me i'm yation inchworm phillips your host here over on the inchworm show make sure you follow me on social media everywhere i'm here Wiggle with me in the wormhole. <laughs> All right, y'all. Have a good night. Peace. Hi, I'm Diana Garcia Burdett, and I just finished talking about ethylene oxide here on the Inchworm Show.